Backs with a season opening series win against the Rockies. Now the Atlanta Braves visit Houston. And Jay Happ makes his first start of the season. Don't miss it. Fun sign. Hit and run. Pitch out. Astros and Braves are next. Presented by Burger King. Live from Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas, Fox Sports Houston brings you Houston Astros baseball. Tonight it's the first of a three game series. It's the Atlanta Braves 0 and 3 versus the Houston Astros 2 and 1. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown and Jim Deshays. It's been a while since the Astros have been 2 and 1 to open this season, and the pitching has been solid, JD, so far. Uh, yeah, a lot of things going uh, well for the Astros uh, over the weekend against the Rockies, and the starting pitching was very, very good. Now, Jay Happ has a chance to follow suit with what Wandy Rodriguez did Friday. Lucas Harrell, who was spectacular Saturday evening, and then seven very good innings from Bud Norris yesterday. And there's plenty of reasons to expect that Happ will be good. Look at his numbers against Atlanta in his career 2 0, the 2.09 ERA, and the Braves really struggling against left handed pitching, just four out of 41. Last year, the Atlanta Braves had the worst batting average in all of baseball against Southpaws. Brandon Beachy goes for Atlanta tonight, and the Astros hope the bats can continue. Brian Bogusevic got the game winner in the bottom of the eighth with that sharp single to wrap up their second win over the Rockies on Sunday. We'll be back with this opener in just a moment. By the Progressive Insurance Group for a money saving car insurance quote. Call 1 800 Progressive today. 
The roof is open for baseball from Houston. The Atlanta Braves taking on the Houston Astros in the first of a three-game series. The Astros have won two of the first three to try to make it three out of four. Jay Happ is on the mound. The man who's going to be telling you all about the game is standing by Bill Brown and Jim Deshaies. Beautiful night. Thank you, Greg Lucas. Fans really are going to enjoy this evening here at Minute Maid Park. And we give you a look at the Braves' batting order. And it's brought to you by Hyundai. Michael Bourne, the former Astro, comes back. This will be his first game in Houston against the Astros since the trade that took him to Atlanta last year. It's Martin Prado in left field, Brian McCann the catcher, Dan Uggla is the cleanup man at second base, with Freddie Freeman at first base, Matt Diaz in right field, Juan Francisco at third base, Tyler Pasternicki, the rookie shortstop, and Brandon Beachy, who will be facing Houston for the first time in his career. Well, Jay Happ throws the slot for the first time this year. Last year, a forgettable one for him, 6-15 and 15 with a 535 ERA, was sent to the minor leagues, but remember, pitched very well when he was recalled. After that stint down at AAA, hopefully he can keep that rolling defensively. Buck gets his first start out there in left. Schaefer center, Bogusevic right, Lee Altuve, Gonzalez, and Johnson around the horn on the infield. Jason Castro behind the dish. First pitch is strike one to Michael Bourne, the former Astro with two hits and 11 at-bats. The Braves did not hit in their series at New York, in which they were swept. Bourne hit 271 with Houston. Check swing roller, brings Hap over. He gets an easy out, number one. Well, that's a relief to get a speedy runner like Bourne on a check swing, an easy play. Yeah, especially to start a ball game. You know, you, you want to settle in, get some rhythm out there, and if Bourne reaches, then you just start worrying about him, and he's such a pest when he's on the bases. Nice to get him out of the way and then move on. You see Hap finishing there. Pretty solid position, able to react and go get that ground ball. Now Martin Prado, the batter. Prado takes. There's strike one. Prado, a solid player in left field tonight with two hits and 11 at-bats, one of those a homer. Pitch just off the plate, makes it even at one and one to Prado, who led the Braves with 26 hits in spring training and had a 466 on base average in a very good spring. That one goes to shortstop, and the rookie, Marwin Gonzalez, takes care of out number two. And Jay Happ with that career ERA as a starter against Atlanta, 1.72. That ranks as the third best starter's ERA against the Braves since 1950 with a minimum of six starts. Only Greg Matthews and Paul Mahalam have better ERAs. Brian McCann is a challenge for any pitcher. Slugging catcher has a homer so far this season. Showing bunt and fouling it. There's strike one. <laughs> well, the Astros with the extreme shift on. Chris Johnson playing at the shortstop position. So McCann with the lefty on the mound. Figures, well, I'll take a shot. Try to keep him honest anyway. Now CJ sneaks in a little bit. It still stays way off the line. It's a one ball, one strike count. Braves are a predominantly left-handed hitting team right now. Chipper Jones will return tomorrow night, they say. Fly ball high. And over into foul ground, Altuve with the catch. It's a quick first inning for Jay Happ. He puts up a zero, and it's Brandon Beachy to the hill in just a moment.
right-hander who will be facing this lineup brought to you by Hyundai. The Astros go with former Brave Jordan Schaefer in center field. Jose Altuve at second base. Travis Buck gets his first Houston start in left field. He's two for two off the bench this season. Carlos leaves at first base with Brian Bogusevic, who had the game winner yesterday in right field. Chris Johnson at third base. Jason Castro, the catcher. Marwin Gonzalez at shortstop. Jay Happ, the pitcher. Atlanta Braves had a lot, uh, have a lot of talented young pitchers, both here in Atlanta and down on the farm. Brandon Beachy, one of them. You look at his work from last year as a rookie, seven and three. With a 368 ERA for 25 starts, a strikeout pitcher, 169 strikeouts in 141 and two-thirds innings. Beachy part of a young Atlanta starting rotation. Schaefer the batter. Bunting, and he fouls it back over the screen. Strike one. He was trying to bunt against Jamie Moyer Saturday night. Had a slight injury to his finger and then whacked the ball out of the park for his first career leadoff homer. So with a 200 average, one homer, two runs batted in. He tries to make something happen here again tonight as the leadoff guy. And the fastball makes it 0-2. Beachy facing the Astros for the first time. 25 years old from Kokomo, Indiana. He went to Indiana Wesleyan University. He was an undrafted free agent in 08. He was a third baseman and closer in college. Tap to first, Freddie Freeman there, one out. Yeah, an interesting story. Beachy went to, to the Shenandoah Valley League, a college summer league, uh, to play and was scouted there. The Braves signed him. And, uh, fairly quick ascension to the big leagues for a guy with that track record. Good speed, of course, with Michael Bourne in center. He's got Prado and Diaz on either side of him. Francisco has issues defensively there at third. Pass for Nicky, the shortstop quite good as is Freeman over there at first base. Ugly's got second. McCann's got the plate. Jose Altuve bats. Taking upstairs ball one to Altuve who has two hits and he scored three runs. Among Major League rookies only Michael Pineda had more strikeouts than Beachy last year. Fastball slider. Curve and change. One ball one strike. The Astros started last year 0 and 5. They started the year before 0 and 8. They are now 2 and 1. Best start since the 06 season for three games. They were 3 and 1 after four games in 06. It's 2 and 1. They scored 13 runs in winning two of three against the Rockies. Rockies were shut out at home in their opener today by Barry Zito and the Giants 7 0 on four hits. First shutout in nine years for Barry Zito. Oh, it comes in his first start of the year at Coors Field of all places. <laughs> Go figure. Freddy Gonzalez may or may not be on the hot seat depending on who you talk to. In the air to center field. Michael Bourne backing on it. Two outs. Well the Braves of course collapsed at the end of the season. They lost 20 of their last. 30 games. At one point, they had a 10 and one half game lead in the wild card race, and then they failed to go to the playoffs. And there has been much written about that. And uh, Freddie Gonzalez has been criticized by some for the use of the bullpen, but the fact of the matter was his starters were averaging about five innings per start at the end of the year. And, uh, you know, he could have left them in there, but <laughs> you try to win each game, and that's what he was trying to do going to the bullpen. Now Travis Buck takes strike one and the bullpen that had been so good for him all summer long kind of went in the tank too in September. So it was a total team effort starters bullpen offense. Yeah they didn't dormant. Hit. That's right and, and lost 20 out of 30 including their last five finished one game out of the postseason. Very very difficult thing to stomach uh, fading like that at the end and all the psychoanalysts come in of course. But the Braves just decided that uh, they just just ran out of good play for whatever reason. They made a few changes. They traded Derek Lowe to Cleveland. And uh, Tim Hudson who's going to be in the rotation is on a rehab assignment right now after back surgery. He might be back by the first of May or so. But right now for their five starters are 26 or younger. One ball two strikes so after 
that finished last year in the 0 and 3 start this season they're ready for some winning. This is the first time they've started 0 and 3 since the 0 3 season. Well they turned that around pretty well they won 101 games. Two and two to Travis Buck. Most think the Braves will be right there in the thick of it in the National League East. Travis Buck has shown some good power. This spring and then his first two at bats here. Foul away. J.D. Martinez not getting the start tonight, and of course Brad Mills wants to get all the players a start as soon as possible this season. So J.D. sits on that three-game hitting streak, staying pretty much exclusively away. Took one shot inside. You pick your spots. You got a left-handed hitter. Give him a shot at the hard-throwing righty here tonight. And as you mentioned, it's important for a manager to get his bench guys to start early to kind of get them into the flow of the season. Good spring for Travis Buck, 280 with a homer. He's 28 years old. Drafted in 05 by Oakland. Bounce to first base. Freeman's there. He's a good fielder. And both pitchers have a 1 2 3 first. No score in Houston. Game and actually, it's fans, uh, the plural. I got a couple of youngsters here seeing their first major league game in person. Introduce yourselves to the TV audience. I'm Brandon Tallow from Louisiana. Okay. Rob Berenger from Louisiana. Great. Astros fans from Louisiana, your first big league game. You guys have gotten some autographs, or what have you done what, that, that you've enjoyed? Well, we got to go catch fly balls in the outfield, and we got two from the players, and we got to get autographs. And now we get to do this. And we were also on the jumbo trying a few minutes ago. Uh, it doesn't get now. You're on TV. Pretty sweet deal, eh, Brock? Yes, sir. So uh, I assume you've done all your homework and all that good stuff. You, it's, you know, it's it's a Monday night after all. Well, this week we actually have school off because of Easter. Okay. And this is our Easter present. Outstanding. Well, I will point out that you guys are in prime foul ball territory here. There won't be one here as the Astros get an out. But if there's a ball hit over here, I want to see a lot of hustle. You scramble for that ball. Got it? All right, you are progressive fans of the game. Way to go. And I just want to point out that there's a few extra things in the bag since it's kids. It's a couple of bags of Cracker Jacks. So, there you go, Brownie. Back to you. Oh, very nice. Well done, Bart. Meanwhile, that shot blocked by Marwin Gonzalez and then a low throw picked by Carlos Lee takes care of out number one for Jay Happ who has set down the first four. One of the pitchers best friends right there the atom ball J.D. Yeah, yeah. 
And, and, and Marwin has proven to be a good guy to have the ball hit to. Pretty slick out there at shortstop. He really doesn't panic. He's very composed. There's a shot by Freeman to right. And that one had top spin on it. Looped in front of Brian Bogusevic for a hit for Freeman, who had been three for 12 to open the season. Finished second in the uh, rookie of the year balloting last year in the National League. Very talented young player. Can really swing it great defensively down there at first base. Talked about their young pitching. They got some very good young position players. Future looks good for Atlanta. The present doesn't look too bad either. I mean, the immediate <laughs> present, not so good, having just been swept by the Mets, but pretty good club. Matt Diaz is one of the veterans on their club, fouling it back, strike one. Diaz, one for six in the early going, 34 year old outfielder who came up with the Tampa Bay organization. Last year, the Braves got him from Pittsburgh. And they made a trade in late August. He's very good against lefties. He hit 295 against Southpaws last season, and he is 8 for 15 against Hap, including a homer. No balls, two strikes. Hap is not one of those lefties who is drastically more effective against left handed hitters than right handers, but he is somebody who can keep the left handers down more so than the right handers he faces. Braves hit only 151 as a team in New York. Breaking ball, get it in the dirt, back foot him. Didn't get it there, but he's not able to do a whole lot with it. No balls, two strikes. He wants to throw that breaking ball right down on his back foot. Try to get a swing and a miss. We saw J. Hap's numbers from last season, six and fifteen with a 5.35 ERA. It has looked like a different J. Hap since last September. And he went to Oklahoma City. It just seemed when he came back, JD, he was much falling behind the hitters the way he had been. Yeah, pitched to a pretty low ERA after coming back. It's tough when well, you start to get beat up. And sometimes the head starts to spin and you can't find a way out and the best thing the best medicine is a trip to the minor leagues. Mm -hmm. Get out of the pressure cooker a little bit. One and two most players don't buy that they don't want it. They don't want to have to deal with being sent down but sometimes just the mental break of, of being able to pitch down in the minor leagues where there isn't as much attention and there's not as much on the line. It allows you to tinker a little bit frees you up mentally some. Chris Johnson on the two hopper guns and Altuve turns but not in time for two. Five four force on Freeman Diaz reaching. Well the other thing about that trip to the minor leagues. By the very nature of things minor league hitters are not as good as big league hitters so you get away with more mistakes and you have a little success and that breeds confidence and. And then you come back feel a little bit better about things and, and you can change your approach mm -hmm. very difficult to get two on that ball. You know, two slow hops, and you could see on the replay the way Diaz was sort of leaning toward first base when he finished his swing, so he had a good start out of the box on it. Now it's Juan Francisco, formerly with Cincinnati, and it's his first uh, start against a lefty in the young season. Juan, 24 years old. And Chipper Jones, probably, from what we are being told, will come off the disabled list for tomorrow night's game, so don't be surprised if he's the starter. He went through some fielding drills tonight before the game. Braves traded a pitcher J.J. Hoover on April 1st to get Francisco. We saw Francisco with the Reds a little bit. Big time power. He can hit the ball a long, long way. But he swings and misses an awful lot. Yeah, he has 51 strikeouts in 169 major league at bats coming into this season. Fouls it back and it's a one ball two strike count. And Chipper Jones also took some batting practice. Among the great switch hitters third in homers to Mickey Mantle and Eddie Murray. With 454 he has said this will be his last season. And some Braves fans have brought out their signs to pay tribute on his last trip to Houston. 
Chipper has a ranch in Carrizo Springs in South Texas. Bouncer past the diving Carlos Lee into right field. Diaz to second on the single by Francisco, and the Braves put two men on for the rookie shortstop, Pastor Nicky. Well, Francisco gets a breaking ball and is able to pull it through the hole between first and second. Diaz with a turn of second, but he would have been dead man walking with Bogusevic <laughs> on top of that ball in a hurry. Just go hard in case there's a bobble. Pastor Nicky, 22 years old, from Bradenton, Florida, was traded by the Blue Jays to the Braves. There's ball one to him. And he was in a battle for that shortstop job this spring with Andrelton Simmons, who is uh, the same age. And Pastor Nicky last year was a double A Mississippi and triple A Gwinnett. And to read most of the stories about the Braves this winter, he was the guy that they would. Expect to be the shortstop, and it did play out that way. Liner to right center field. He's going to give the Braves the lead. Bogusevic comes up with it. Throw goes back into second base on an RBI single by Pastor Nicky. First major league RBI for him. That makes it 1 0 Atlanta. Not a bad pitch fastball probably caught too much of the plate and a good inside out swing by Pastor Nicky who has hit for a high average throughout his minor league career not for much power. Freddie Gonzalez gets a. It's an RBI. From the eight spot in his lineup. Well he would gladly take that from a club that. Only scored seven runs in its first three games. Brandon Beachy bats. Strike one to Beachy. Good athlete. Got to be careful. Don't get careless. And Beachy first came to the Braves in the 2010 season. He made three starts that year. He's an 083 major league hitter. Maybe you do want to get careless. <laughs> well, but he had a background, as you pointed out, in, in college as a position player. So that's what I was basing it on. Sure. One and one. And the fact that he looks like hard hitting Timmy Bogar up there. <laughs> and there's that old saying, JD, anybody with a bat can be dangerous. Not sure about that. Well, we've seen a lot a of guys act. with bats who weren't dangerous, but yeah. yeah, this guy might be. One and two. Yeah. Dep depends on how you define dangerous. Maybe capable. Hank Gary was not dangerous. Bob Buell was not dangerous. Thanks for leaving me out of that list, Johnny. <laughs> I know you're thinking it. Go ahead and say it. <laughs> I can Two take the hit. <laughs> you have taken the hit a few thousand times already. <laughs> Two balls, two strikes. So you get that backside down. Don't let that squirt through the five hole. Yeah. Braves and Astros playoff opponents for those years and it was interesting to see Craig Biggio and Chipper Jones standing there at home plate not in uniform at least as far as Craig was concerned so all those years all those playoff games between the two foes and boy haven't they both turned pages since then with a couple of young rosters meeting yeah, here just uh, need to see Craig and Chipper down there two guys that spent their entire careers with their respective organizations. Little roller brings Hap over toward the line. He doesn't make the pickup, and it costs him a run. Two to nothing, Braves on a slowly hit roller by Beachy, who proves to be dangerous. Yep. By not hitting it hard. A lot of, a lot of ways to be dangerous in this game, and uh, compounded when there's a man 90 feet away from home plate. Just a little slow roller that CJ probably would have been able to make a play on. Hard to say. You can't fault Hap for trying to make a play on this ball. If he gets it cleanly, he gets his man. In all likelihood. Now Houston native Michael Bourne comes up. Michael drove in 50 runs last season. And again he led the league in steals last year with 61. 
Grounded out to Hap, first time up. Michael drafted by the Phillies in 03. After his career at the University of Houston and Nimitz High School. Michael won gold gloves in 09 and 2010. Well, he's just continued to improve since he put on the Astros uniform, and the Braves liked what they got in the trade that took him to Atlanta. Now he's in the final year of his contract. And he's represented by Scott Boris. He's about to get paid. Yes, he is. He has become one of the elite defensive center fielders in the game and an improving offensive player, 263 career hitter. What's been the big improvement about Michael, I think, JD, is the on base average. That was 349 last season, 331 for his career, but he just seemed to reach base at a better clip and work the count more. Yeah, at his best when he gets getting on top of the ball, hitting the ball hard on the ground or on the line, shooting it the other way. Good pitch makes it two and two. Back after this ballpark opened in uh, 2000, the next year in 01, he played in the college classic here as a Cougar. He bounces this one, a two hopper to Carlos Lee. And in the Braves' second inning, they come up with two runs on four hits and strand two to grab a two to nothing lead. Time to remind you about something special tomorrow. The Astros will celebrate the 50th anniversary for the first time in franchise history tomorrow against the Braves. Now, the Astros will wear the authentic Colt 45 uniforms. 10,000 fans receive a Colt 45 cap courtesy of Cons. Root now and buy tickets for Astros.com. That's the spot. Now, remember the significance tomorrow that is also the anniversary of the first Astro game, actually, Colt 45 game, first major league game in Houston. On April 10th, 1962. Tomorrow, big doings. Get here and get here early. In fact, it starts if you want to get here early and come outside the ballpark on Texas Avenue there with the induction of Bob Aspromati into the brand new Walk of Fame. That'll be at 3 30 tomorrow on Texas Avenue. The first class Walk of Fame inducted starting tomorrow. Carlos Lee at 250 with a homer is driven in three. He looks at strike one. And there will be other alumni as well from the 62 Colt 45s. Bob Bruce, Hal Smith, Al Spangler, and Carl Warwick. They'll be signing autographs for the public on the main concourse 
from 6 to 6.30 tomorrow night before the game. The Astros will be wearing the authentic Colt 45 uniforms from 62 through 64. Hey, maybe we should dress like it's 1962 tomorrow. Okay. I don't know what that would entail. Well, how old were you in 1962? Two. All right. Oh, I could dress like I looked like in 62. <laughs> no, I just went to my people. <laughs> A fly ball to right center field. Michael Bournemouth. You could you could come dressed like a Maybe. two year old. <laughs> for, for people wearing uh, fedoras back then. I mean, what was, uh, what was the style in '62? Um, I think they had kind of grown through that stage, yeah. so to speak. But like that Mad Men show, right? In, that, in yeah. that the '60s. Yeah. That's right. Uh, we'll That's the way we tomorrow. look every night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. You got a skinny ties, skinny lapels. Yeah. You got to smoke a lot. Yeah, I guess yeah, you got to smoke. Smoke and drink martinis up here. Yeah. That could prove to be interesting tomorrow night. Then. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the second yeah. inning. Here's Brian Bogusevic. There's ball one. He's two for eleven with uh, a big game winner yesterday, and he also has a homer this season. Beachy very effective last year against both right and left handed hitters in terms of batting average essentially the same lefties 236 right handers just a point better. Two balls and a strike. You Darvish in his major league debut has run into a Seattle Mariner club that just hung a four spot on him in the top of the first at Arlington Texas. Darvish gave up four hits and walked three in his first major league inning. You who? Uh oh, you. Uh, you smart. He's not. Uh, he's not starting. Right off the bat. In, in dominant fashion, he's going to sneak up on people. Foul away. Three balls, two strikes. He's 25 years old. He was the two-time MVP of the Japanese Pacific League in 07 and 09. Signed that big contract as a free agent with the Rangers. He's the 19th Japanese born pitcher to start a major league game. Hideo Nomo was the best. Rolled out between third and short. Here's the play by Francisco, but he didn't make the play. The throw pulled Freeman off the bag, and Bogusevic reaches. I'm guessing base hit here. Yeah. This goes well off the line. That's what allows him to get the ball in the first place. Has to hurry. And in so doing, throws sidearm. The ball just really sails on him. He's not a particularly good defender. I'm thinking that's a base hit. I have to agree with you. We're still awaiting a ruling on it. As Chris Johnson bats. All one to CJ is three for 11 with a pair of doubles. It's being ruled an error on Francisco. Johnson fouls it away. It's a one ball, one strike count. It's kind of ironic because if they didn't have the shift on, it would have been just a routine ground ball to short. True. Kevin Allen has that view. Looking in from left field. Pretty night. Nice temperature. Beautiful night to be at the ballpark. Breeze blowing out to left. Tough pitch there makes it one and two. This is the first of three straight night games in this series. Braves only trip to Houston. This kid is cut, boy. He's an athlete. He's an athlete that just happens to pitch. Yeah, nice compact delivery. Seems to be very repeatable. Breaking pitch, tap foul. Still one and two. Yeah, he looks good. Yeah, you know, there's probably no real deception in that delivery, but uh, keeps everything pretty square to home plate. Gets on top of the ball well. Keep that front side in. Kind of flew a little bit beneath the radar last year. There was so much attention paid to those kids in the bullpen. Kimberl and Venters. 
He gets a strikeout. That's number one. Tomorrow night, the Braves go with Tommy Hansen. Hansen against the Astros, 3 0 with a 0 0.97 ERA in his career. Strikeout pitch there for Beachy. Beachy last year struck out 169 in 141 innings. Impressive numbers. Jason Castro is 0 for 5. And Wednesday night, Randall Delgado, who's been one of the promising young Braves pitchers to climb the ladder to the big leagues, opposes Wandy Rodriguez. 7.05 start times for all three games in this series. And that'll be it for the homestand. And the Astros go on the road to Miami for three over the weekend and Washington for four. Miami won today in the Phillies home opener, six to two. Beat Cole Hamels. Ozzie Guillen is flying back to uh, Miami tomorrow to apologize for his I like Castro remarks. Well, <laughs> took him a long time to get in trouble, didn't he? <laughs> it, yeah, there was a little delay on that. Well, he could just say that Friday night when Jason Castro's in town. Yeah, that's that's going to be his excuse. <laughs> talking about that catcher for the Astros. I really like that guy. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Well, Castro, the Astro, from Castro Valley, California. So it had to be meant to be with that whole combination. Yeah. Tomorrow they'll honor Aspro the Astro. We're getting tongue tied. And uh, we look forward to a visit from Bob Aspromani tomorrow night. Jason Castro, 24 years old, a first round pick in 08. First reached the big leagues in 2010 after coming from Stanford. Had right knee reconstructive surgery after his spring training injury over a year ago. Missed all of last year, but the rehab has gone extremely well. His knees felt fine. He then broke a bone in his foot this winter, so that put him back a little bit for spring training as well. But I think this situation here is good for the Astros because both these catchers, and Chris Snyder is the other, have had surgery in the last year. Chris had back surgery last June, so. They'll share this job for a while, and that's probably good for the team. Uh, it, it's really a good pairing in that, you know, you'd, you'd like to have a veteran to go along with the youngster. You got a left handed hitter in Castro, a right handed hitter in Snyder. Castro, a guy who in his minor league career is hitting for a good average, and it's the only ability to work the walk. Snyder brings power to the table. Just depends, you know. So, so Brad Mills has got options as to how he uses these guys, and we may see things develop down the line where somebody claims the lion's sh share of the playing time just because of their performance. But you know, Jason Castro is going to get a bunch of it because he's he's kind of the guy of the future, right? Soft pop comes back, and this will be out of play for McCann. Well, the Astros. Picked up uh, an outfielder today, Justin Maxwell, claimed on waivers from the Yankee organization, and they sent down lefty reliever Fernando Abad to Oklahoma City. And Maxwell is a right handed batter who's been with Washington prior to his time with the Yankees, so they claimed him off waivers yesterday. And uh, Abad headed for Oklahoma City today. Maxwell was here for batting practice tonight. First time he set foot on ground in Texas. Bouncer up the middle. Pastor Nicky plays it behind second. Low throw, and he gets him for the final out of the second inning. No runs, no hits, an error. A man left after 2 2 nothing Atlanta.
receiving recognition from the Astros and now these Braves fans have brought their signs as Craig Biggio presented him with a special yeah, cowboy yeah, yeah. and his parents are here from Carrizo Springs where he has a ranch so that will come in handy once he goes down to the ranch chip chipper as in chip off the old block and saw the shot of his dad there it's remarkable how much they look alike they really do. Martin Prado leads it off in the third inning. Fouling it back for strike one. The Braves are a pitching based club and they were 10th in run scored last year in the National League. 14th in on base average. That's the way it's been for many many years. They Really base what they do around strong pitching and they won 14 straight division titles with some of the great pitching in the game. Out of the way it's one and two a pretty good pitchers ballpark there in Atlanta the ball carries well in Atlanta but that's a, it's a big ballpark. Prado is 28 years old he's from Venezuela. He drove in 57 runs for the Braves last year. Slicing drive goes out of play. There they are, the lookalikes, father and son. And uh, his father coached him. When Chipper signed, uh, he signed for $350,000 in 1990. He was the number one overall pick. The Braves had been talking to pitcher Todd Van Poppel. But he wanted more money than they wanted to pay. So they settled for Chipper. That worked out yeah, pretty well. Yeah, it worked out pretty good. Alamakia wanted Chipper. I can understand that. He's a solid, no doubt, Hall of Famer for you, isn't he? Chipper, yeah. Yeah. His knees don't have much cartilage left in them. That's the reason he's out with an injury right now. He had knee surgery last year. And he's had it again just a few weeks ago. It was his right knee last year. It's his left knee this year. 2600 hits. Great great numbers. Ranks all uh, among active players and. In terms of all time. Among switch hitters, he's way up there. Still two balls, two strikes. Prado, tough guy to finish off, makes a lot of contact, has a pretty short stroke. Doesn't hit for much power, but generally batting average. There's a shot by a diving Chris Johnson into the left field corner. Extra bases for Prado. Hit number five for the Braves, their first extra base hit. So a couple of runs for the Braves down at the bottom of the order last inning. Now with two, three, four up, it starts with a leadoff double. Good battle by Prado, and he ultimately wins it out in front of this breaking ball out on his front foot. But you see how he keeps the hands back and then lashes that ball down the third baseline. Brian McCann hit a foul pop caught by Altuve his first time up. He led all National League catchers last year in homers. Ball one to McCann with Ugla on deck. McCann has made six straight appearances in the All-Star game. In his first six seasons. He pulls it through the shift and a hit into right field. Prado to the plate. Bogusevic with a throw. It's up the line. Braves lead it three nothing on the RBI single by their catcher. Fairly aggressive send there with nobody out in the inning, but it pays off for the Braves. And gets the RBI. 
despite the shift, he's able to yank it through that hole just barely. Powerful Dan Ugla follows. He grounded to Gonzalez. Ugla really struggled in the first half of the season, but he came on in the second half last year. Strike one. One of the more bizarre years of any hitter in, re in recent seasons. There's the breakdown. First 75 games, he was hitting like 170 something. Then he went on a 33 game hitting streak. <laughs> just crazy. That was probably the most surprising 33 game hitting streak ever, considering where he started. No balls, two strikes to Dan Ugla. And he had a good spring with six homers and 15 runs batted in. He's had 530 home runs, 30 or more. No second baseman has done that more often than Ugla. This one. And Castro can't find it, but it got off to his left, so it's a wild pitch getting McCann to second base. And the Braves are trying to build some working room for Beachy here early. Just, just a little bit late getting into position to try to block that ball and keep it in front. McCann took off. Dan Douglas, 32 years old, beginning his career in Arizona when he was drafted uh, by the D backs in 01. He then was a Rule 5 pick by Florida. And that's when he came to the big leagues in 06 with Florida. There's the block. Two balls, two strikes. Douglas, one of the big power threats on this Braves club. And well, he's just, as you mentioned, JD, been so consistent with 30 home runs five years in a row that they base a, a lot of their power on him being that consistent. Strike makes it. Makes it see number him. one, yeah. Was not anticipating this fastball and did not argue. He knew he had been had. Plenty of the plate, bottom of the knees. You mentioned Freddie Freeman is batting now, was second in that rookie of the year voting last year, and then the year before it was Jason Hayward. And then uh, the closer was the rookie of the year last year, Craig Kimbrell. So that's uh, three of the top rookies they've produced the last two years. And that's an out for out number two, advancing yeah. McCann over to third. And Hanson, when he first came into the league, you know, he's a high, high ceiling guy, mm -hmm. still young. Well, earlier we heard from a couple of guys who were seeing their first major league game. You suppose this might be that little guy's first major league game? He looks like a salty veteran. He does. Little guy. Matt Diaz hit that uh, ground ball. And Freeman was forced on it at second base his first time up. Fly ball to right, pushing Bogusevic back a couple of steps. And in the third, the Braves add to their lead with a run on two hits and strand him at it. Third to lead 3 0.
Now for our AT&T trivia question, and this one has to do from the history of the Astros and, in fact, with the Braves. Our question is, when Turk Farrell threw the first shutout of the Braves that a Houston team ever tossed, there were four future major league managers in the game. Who were they? This happened, by the way, in uh, August of 1962. Four future managers in the game in 62 when Farrell shut out the Braves. Ooh, that's a good question. I'll throw uh, Eddie Matthews out there. You have one. You get a little tinkle for that. Gonzalez, the batter, he leads it off and takes strike one. He's one for ten. Boods will go with uh, Felipe Alou. Uh, he was not in the game. Interesting. There's another future manager that wasn't in the game. How about Joe Torre? Joe Torre, yeah. Another little tinkle. That's two. Two okay. out of four. Let's see. Just trying to think of anybody from the uh, Colt 45 side. There is one. Okay. And are we talking about somebody who managed for any length of time, or was it a kind of a, you know? Well. Okay, you got one. Kevin. Ke Kevin. Uh, I'm not sure what we're not hearing, so his mic may not be. Kevin, okay. what do you have? Bob Lillis. How about that? That's right. That is a third uh, the tingle. Flea. Yeah. The flea. And the fourth one was with the Braves. All right. 62 Braves. I will give you a clue. The team he managed was the Mets. Hmm. Uh, Roy McMillan. That is correct. Hey. Outstanding, J.D. Four out of four. Roy, of course, a native of Bonham, Texas, great with the Reds, was playing shortstop for the Braves at the time. Del Crandall was didn't play in that game, and he later was a manager too. Gonzalez with a shot to second, smothered by Ugla. There was one little. Let's make it official. I got a little side note. This is the AT&T official answer. Uh, first shutout game. There were four future managers: Lillis, McMillan, Matthews, and Torrey. There was also one player. Who was the father of a future manager, and that was Gus Bell. Ah, buddy, of course, buddy. right? Yeah. Good factoid, Greg. That's nice work. That is your first uh, question. That is my season. first submission of the year. All right. Then we get progressively obscure as we get farther and farther <laughs> along, and I run out of questions. We love obscurity. <laughs> Strike one to Jay Happ. An 092 career hitter with one homer. And five runs batted in. It's Kyle Weiland pitching tomorrow night for the Astros against Tommy Hansen. Dollar hot dogs. So uh, there's a lot going on tomorrow night. Yeah, you got to have one of those to go with your hot dog. Hot dogs are a dollar tomorrow night. And caps, those Colt 45 caps to the first 10,000 people tomorrow night. And then you get to see uh, five former Colt 45s out here signing autographs. And uh, we just got a release on everything that's happening tomorrow night, presented by the Methodist Hospital System. So Bob Aspermani will throw out the first pitch. Half is a strikeout victim. That's number two. It's going along nicely here for Beachy. Has not yet allowed a base hit as he works with two outs in the third inning. By the way, uh, Larry Durker will be honored on April 20th. Against the Dodgers. That will be the next home Friday night game. And uh, Larry and Jimmy Wynn will be here tomorrow. And Jose Cruz, when Bob Aspermani is honored uh, outside the ballpark of the Walk of Fame. Jordan Schaefer rounded out first time up. Strike one to Jordan. This is the first time the Astros have been above 500 since July 29th, 2009. 51 and 50, I think they were then. Yeah. And they went into a little bit of a slide, never recovered. Of course, they started miserably in each of the next two seasons and never recovered. 0 8 there. Millsy's first year as manager, we were a little worried for him. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Two balls and a strike. No, no way to start a career. <laughs> well, he feels good about this young bunch of players.
Three balls and a strike. Schaefer and Bourne exchanging uniforms in that Atlanta Houston trade. Be interesting to see how that works out. Schaefer put on about 20 pounds over the winter. It's three and two. Altuve's on deck. The Astros looking for their first hit of the night against Brandon Beachy. Facing them for the first time in his career. And there's a two out walk to Schaefer. Even though they don't have a hit, they are working some counts in this game. And so many times last year, they failed to do that. So 52 pitches have been thrown by Beachy so far. 32 strikes. Beachy uh, had good control last year 46 walks in 141 innings. Hector Noesi is pitching for Seattle at Texas. Mariners lead it over the Rangers 5 to 2 in the bottom of the second inning. He's a former Yankee. That big trade between Seattle and the Yankees. He went the other way. Michael Pineda came to the Pinstripers and he is hurt right now. How about the Yankees and Red Sox both 0 and 3 to open the season? That's a rarity. Hasn't happened since 1966. Probably panicking. <laughs> Those cities. <laughs> fan base probably pretty worked up. Yankees lead Baltimore 5 to 1 tonight. Okay. Well, this is the first time in uh, 22 years that the Mets have been 3 and 0 and the Yankees 0 and 3 also. Mets own the city of New York right now. One ball, one strike. Remind Jeter and A-Rod it's all about Lucas Duda. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Johan Santana is back in their rotation now. Threw the ball pretty well on opening day. Milwaukee leads the Cubs 5-3. to three. They're in the bottom of the sixth at Chicago. Ricky Weeks has gone deep for the Brewers, his second. Darwin Barney and Brian LaHare have Chicago home runs. LaHare is the new first baseman. One and two, Altuve chased that one. Abici uh, quick pitched him a little bit there. And, uh, altered the tempo of his delivery and then threw a breaking ball, and Altuve was all out of sorts, way out in front of it. It'd be a good time to try to steal a bag. One and two, two outs. Yes, it would. Schaefer draws a throw. Freddie Gonzalez wants to take a shot over there, see if he can see if Schaefer's leaning at all. Just because it's you know Altuve's not a power guy, so it's, it's it would be tough to get something going here with two strikes, two outs, and a man on first. And if you get thrown out, then you can start fresh with Altuve next inning, and nothing else. You create some movement in the infield, maybe open up a hole for Altuve. Bounce to third and foul. Schaefer was thrown out trying to steal in the first inning yesterday. He had 14 straight stolen bases since the last time he was thrown out. Yeah, the downside, of course, is the manager is much more likely to pitch out in a count like one and two. If he pitches out here and nothing going on, he still hasn't put his pitcher in a big hole. Travis Buck is on deck. Now holding the ball. Step out, step out. There you go. Mm -hmm. He's doing whatever he can to upset the timing of Schaefer over there at first base. And talking about the pitch out scenario, of course, you know, in today's game, the manager, Brad Mills, he would he would have at his disposal every pitch out that the Braves did last year if he wanted and on what counts and who was on the mound. Try to get some manager tendencies. Now the quick pitch. McCann with the ball McCann. getting away from him had blocked it. Two and two. Yeah, there's a lot of information out there, isn't there? Wow, 55 footer. Yeah, I mean, you can get you know, you talk about scouting players, but you also scout the opposing manager. You get a sense for his tendencies. Does he pitch out? What counts does he like to hit and run? Things of that nature. But clearly, right now, Jordan Schaefer has gotten Beachy's attention. And uh, his pitches towards home have suffered because of it. Are going. Bouncer, the shortstop had moved over, and the ball is over the other way, and it's dropped. Ah. And now here's a throw to third, and oh gets away. 
And Schaefer is able to get into third base as the Braves fumble the ball on the left side. There's a little bit of good and a whole lot of bad going on with that play. This is kind of fun. Schaefer indeed on the move. That creates a hole with the shortstop covering, but Francisco comes over, picks it up. Schaefer just keeps on going. And by all rights, should have been an easy out, but a mishandle here. Bad throw by Francisco. Pasternak not able to corral it. That should be an E5. Freddy Gonzalez probably the come on chipper. Please be healthy tomorrow. And gets Travis Buck to the plate now with runners at first and third. And it's strike one. Now we could just see Pastor Nicky with the runner at first there, Schaefer. He was breaking for second base. Looked like he left a little bit early. JD, that took him out of the play, and Francisco had to come over and try to make that play. Buck with a ground ball that will get a run home. That's three to one and here is Altuve. He's coming to the plate as well. Relay from Pastor Nicky and he's safe as the ball gets away from McCann. And Buck winds up at third. So Travis Buck in his first start as an Astro hits one sharply into the left field corner and takes third when the throw gets away. And that's what we've seen from Buck in a little bit. We've seen of him the ability to go the other way. He's got a lot of room to operate down that third baseline. Dave Clark coming down the line to take a look at it in the corner. And he just keeps on cranking out to all the way around. A perfect throw perhaps gets him, but I love the, the aggressive play by Dave Clark. It's kind of the, uh, the MO for Brad Mills and the Astros this year. Force the action. Why not? And now it's Carlos Lee looking at ball one going back to Altuve's grounder Altuve was given a hit now he scores. That would be an error ruled here on that throw that allowed Buck to move to third base. Yes it is an error on that throw. Curveball ball works for Beachy for a strike and it's one and one. So there have been a couple of hits in the inning. Altuve was credited with a hit, and Buck with the run producing double as a couple of runs come in. We'll see if he got both those RBIs. We're still checking on that. And there was an error given to Prado, apparently, from what we're hearing. Now it had to be the shortstop. Yeah, it was a shortstop. Okay. But Francisco got an error on the Altuve play. Right. So there are three errors in the inning and four in the game. Roller up the middle and that ties it at three. Carlos Lee comes through with RBI number four of this season. And the Astros get a fresh start. And it all started with a two out walk to Jordan Schaefer. Two out, nobody on. Looks like it's going to be an easy inning for Beachy. The wheels have come off here for the right hander. Yeah, really not has. so much of his own doing other than the walk. Not like they're tattooing him. Buck just hit his in a good spot. Carlos hit his in a good spot. Defense has been awfully bad. You know that's kind of the theme of this homestand so far. Opening night the Astros made four errors. They lost to Colorado 5 3. Saturday night Colorado made three errors losing to Houston 7 3. Now the Braves have committed four errors and it's the 3 3 game with Bogusevic batting. Brian reached on an error. And that's ball one. It's 2 0. Oh. There's a chance where he might get a cripple fastball right here. Pitcher's frustrated. He's had to make a lot of pitches. Defense letting him down. Maybe the concentration wavers a little bit. Down 
bouncer to second. Ugla. Over to Freeman and the Astros cash in with two outs nobody on a walk to Schaefer Altuve dribbles one reaches on an infield hit and then a couple of errors on the play. Buck drives in a couple with a double and the Astros tie it 3-3. Three -three. have a total of four on the scoreboard and here and the official score is uh, doing some polling. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> as, uh, Francisco leads it off. Zogby poll going down there. <laughs> Latest Quinnipiac College. <laughs> Numbers are in. Well Francisco has not been strong with the glove. We know that but he has had a single and scored a run. It's a one ball one strike count so the Braves will be overjoyed to get uh, Chipper Jones back and there's a lot of consideration being given over there by those being polled in the press box. A little roller brings Jay Happ in. And it's out number one. Yeah if I was the official score I just would be like the old Roman Coliseum I just turn around to the press box and look for the thumbs up or the thumbs down. <laughs> Certainly uh, not as serious as the attention being given to uh, the registered voters in some counties in Texas, which uh, <laughs> is a matter of a lot of debate right now. Pastor Nicky got the RBI single to right center in the second. He takes ball one. Tight at the corner. Chris Johnson. Carlos Lee is in it, but way off the line. Interesting. Defensive deployment here. Two balls, no strikes. Now Johnson drops back at third, and the ball goes out of play for a 2 1 count. Master Nicky coming from the Blue Jays, as we mentioned earlier, in that. Trade uh, the Braves made in which they gave up their shortstop Escobar. You know Escobar to get much younger at that position, and Escobar had his moments. He's a very flashy shortstop. Two balls, two strikes. It'll be interesting to see how he pans out the next few years for the Blue Jays. Foul back with Beachy on deck. Still a two ball, two strike count. White Sox lead at Cleveland four to one. They've played seven with Deaza and Pierzynski going deep for Robin Ventura's club.
Half is 2 0 lifetime against the Braves. He gets a strikeout of Pastor Nicky. They're trying to go in with a fastball. He didn't get it there, but it was up out of the zone. It looked good to Pastor Nicky, so he took a whack at it. You've seen half half success with a high fastball like that when he gets ahead in the counting, climb the ladder. Again, that wasn't his intent there, but he can be effective upstairs. There's strike one to Beachy. Beachy got the infield hit, and that drove in a run on the little dribbler. Jay Happ could not field. So both clubs uh, hitting the ball softly and scoring on a few plays with some help from defensive lapses along the way in this game. Kind of a sloppy, ragged game. One ball, one strike. But it's almost as if since it's 3 3, you forget about all that and go from here. And the way the modern game is played, a tight game in the seventh is likely go to go to the bullpen. So if you're a starting pitcher in this game, that's your, your thought process is okay, this game is there to be had. I just need to take control of it. If I can post three zeros and get into the seventh, I got a real good chance of being a winning pitcher. Isn't that the truth? It's the whole MO for the Braves most of last year. Their bullpen was so good. The Astros bullpen really struggled last year, especially early on. Three and two now as half rips it by him upstairs. Jay's fastball reading 89 on that one. Jay's one of those guys, kind of like you, JD, on that on that high heater. The hitters don't pick it up very well. There's a little sneaky up there. And he gets a strikeout. That's number three. And enjoys his second one, two, three inning of the night. Keep the game tied. Three three in the fourth. That's right. Craig Biggio will be one of them. You can collect all six of the Astros' greatest moments bobbleheads in 2012. Guarantee your ticket to all six nights with the bobblehead night six game plan. Now, plans start at only $30. Remember, though, they do not guarantee receipt of a bobblehead unless you arrive early. Got to keep that in mind, but you'd have tickets for all the big ones. Root now at Astros.com. Thanks, Craig. It's a 3 3 game. Hit number 3000 came for Craig on June 28, 2007. He came back tonight to honor Chipper Jones. Chris Johnson struck out earlier. This one goes in the air toward the right field line. Diaz comes over. One pitch, one out for Beachy. After Hap had a 1 2 3 top of the inning. Now, Beachy, with that strikeout ratio last year of 10.74 per nine innings, was fourth all time. Among rookie starting pitchers with 25 starts or more behind only Kerry Wood, Dwight Gooden, and Hideo Nomo in their rookie seasons. Pretty darn good, eh? Yeah. Set the uh, Braves rookie strikeout mark in the modern era since 1900 with 169 strikeouts. Just two so far here tonight. 
Castro grounded out to short. It's this one sharply, but right there at Ugla. Oh, the throw was still there because Freeman came off and had time to tag Castro. No such thing as routine play tonight. <laughs> Anything but. Two pitches, two outs for Beachy. A little casual. Freeman, he'll save his infielders a lot of errors. Not that that was a difficult play, but pretty slick over there with the leather. He is a good defender. And he's tall. Got good reach. Mm -hmm. Probably a pretty good rebounder in his day. Marwood Gonzalez grounded out earlier. I guess. Corollary would be that Dennis Rodman would have been a good first baseman. I don't know if I can make that case. <laughs> That's a quality pitch on the inside edge to Marwin Gonzalez. Even in the count at one ball, one strike. Marwin and Lucas Harrell getting their first major league hits in consecutive at bats Saturday night. That's a rarity. In fact, the last two Astros to get their first major league hits in consecutive at bats did it in 1981. Alan Nicely and Bert Pena. Bert, a.k.a. the mayor of Tucson. <laughs> For about five years as the shortstop of Tucson, didn't he? He did. And that's why they called him the mayor yeah. of Tucson. That's where the Astros AAA club was at that time. Stuck behind Reynolds and gone. Deep drive to right field. Marwin Gonzalez with a bid for his first major league home. He bangs one off the wall. He'll settle for extra bases and it's a double. Second double for Marwin Gonzalez. Nearly a two out homer. And the right shoe came off of Matt Diaz. Just. It's a little bit more. One more cheeseburger and gets it out of here. <laughs> Oh, so close. He has to settle for a two out double, and that puts a burden on Jay Happ here to try to get him home. Ah, bottom of the wall. Diaz threw a shoe. Yeah. yeah. Planted that foot, lost the shoe. Jay Happ has a shot at giving his club the lead. It's in tight to Jay, ball one. It's like, the, it's like those uh, those skis, those breakaway skis. He's got those breakaway shoes so he doesn't twist his ankle. The design brown he's been working on for years. <laughs> we'll let you know when we have something on that for you. <laughs> Grand yeah. ball in the right field. Gonzalez coming to the plate. And Diaz with a late throw. It's cut off. It's 4-3 Houston RBI single J-half. How about that? A lot of balls hit on the ground to the right side tonight. And a productive one here. Six career RBI for Haps. He clears the hips, squirts it through there, slowly hit. And that gives Gonzalez plenty of time to steam around third and come on home. The Astros are three for three now with runners in scoring position, all with two outs. And it's Schaefer who walked in the third with two outs to get that scoring started. Taking strike one. We talked earlier about uh, Michael Bourne's on base average, and of course, that's always the focus with the leadoff hitter like Schaefer. Not only what does he hit, but how often does he walk? Broken bad roller. Ugla with a quick throw gets him. And it's one run, two hits, and one left for the Astros. They grab the lead for the first time. It's four to three, Houston.
scoreboard finals today. The Angels knock off the Twins 5-1. to one. C.J. Wilson earning that $77 million deal that he got in the offseason for five years. One run on three hits and seven innings of work. Twins now 0-4 for the first time since 1969. In fact, they've not led in a game this season. Anibal Sanchez went deep for the fish. They beat Philly 6-2. to two. He went uh, six and a third, I should say, for Annabelle Sanchez. Omar Infante went deep for the Miami Marlins. And San Francisco, uh, like J.D. said, Zito with his first shutout in nine years of San Francisco avoids their first 0-4 start ever. Brownie, J.D., that's our Mazda game break. Back to you. Thanks, Kevin. It's 4-3 Astros now, and Michael Bourne moves back from ball one. Michael is grounded out twice tonight. Braves have six hits. The Astros have four. Atlanta has committed four errors. That breaks one in for a strike, and it's one and one. We just got a note uh, about the attendance yesterday. It was reported in a publication that the uh, crowd was 14,195. That was the actual people in the house and not the tickets sold. There were 20,000 and some odd tickets sold from what we're being told, and that's a change in policy. In the past, the Astros have reported tickets sold, but uh, this year they're reporting only the actual attendance in the ballpark. So it was not the uh, smallest crowd. Right, right, right. In so the when we tell you the attendance is 21,000 or whatever, there's 21,000. Two, two to Bourne. Haps throwing 71 pitches. That's a fair ball. Good play by Carlos Lee, and Hap just beats Bourne. One out. Seven straight retired by Hap. Part of the strategy when you face the Atlanta Braves is keep them keep Michael Bourne off base so far Jay Happ has been able to do that. Nothing for three for Michael. Jay beats him by. Half a step or so. so Carlos mm -hmm. get his footing there and get his shoulders squared away toward the bag. It's important there to get a good feed because you don't want your pitcher to have to break stride with. Bourne coming down the line that could be the difference. Martin Prado doubled and scored in the third. One from half. Jed Lowry is heading for Oklahoma City tomorrow. He'll have a two game rehab assignment there before rejoining the Astros from the disabled list on Friday in Miami. Two balls and a strike. He'll play about five innings tomorrow night and then nine the next night. And then return. Uh, the Astros will travel Thursday on the off day to Miami and he'll make that trip. And be activated for the Friday night game. Two balls and a strike. That'll give him some advance. He's had that hand injury and hasn't been able to hit for a few days. Well, you're getting good coverage with the play of Marlon Gonzalez as shortstop. So there's not that great sense of urgency, you know, to force him into action. So it makes sense to get him some live game action in the minor leagues to to get up to speed before facing major league pitching again. It's been a while. Punch foul into the Astros dugout. Yeah, somebody bailed out. You know, if uh, Marlon Gonzalez was overmatched here at the big league level, you might not send Lowry out on a rehab. You might say, hey, we need this guy in there now, but that's not the case. True. Hey, the trainers Katsu. are wearing new shirts this There's year. Katsu down there. Yeah. Struck him out on high heat. Prado is out number two. Strike out number four. Nice job by Hat. Came back from 2 0. Got a guy who doesn't punch out all that often to chase a high fastball. So Jay Hap making this uh, game kind of an ugly game in the first three innings look a lot better through these middle frames. And here's McCann. McCann singled in a run in the third, one for two. Shift is on, putting Altuve out in right field. Strike makes it a one ball one strike count. The Braves were one for 14 with runners in scoring position in the New York series. 
Carlos Lee. Ranges behind the bag for the third out. He made two plays over near the first baseline. And that is nine in a row set down by Jay Happ with the Astros up on the Braves 4-3. This date in Astros history brought to you by the MD Anderson Cancer Center making cancer history because it was on this date in 65 when the Astros played their first game against an opponent the New York Yankees in an exhibition the eighth one of the world first indoor baseball game they beat the Yankees two to one despite Mickey Mantle hitting a home run in fact the Yankees had him leading off so he'd get some extra at bats and a chance to do it and he came through got a story about that as Altuve takes strike one. Altuve reached on an error in the third. We thought originally he had been credited with a hit, but either it was changed or it never was a hit. So he still scored a run. He's 0 for 2, and it's no balls, two strikes. Mickey Mantle leading off the game, as you said, and he hit a home run. And when he stepped up, uh, Ron Brand was the rookie catcher for the Astros, and he was about 23 years old. He was somewhat intimidated by playing with Mickey Mantle that game. As you might imagine, he said, Mr. Mantle, would you mind taking the first pitch? The Hall of Fame wants the baseball. And he said, Oh, that's no problem at all. I'm too nervous to swing anyway. So he took the first pitch, but then proceeded to hit a home run. Wow, really? Yeah. I thought the Mick was going to say, Okay, I'll take the first one if you throw me a fastball <laughs> right down the middle on the second one. <laughs> it's only fair. <laughs> that's true. Two and two. And then Ron Brand got the first uh, Houston hit, a triple. And that was the exhibition game that opened it. Almost got him. 81 pitches for Beachy. And he gets a swing and a miss. Foul tip in the dirt, oh, so he was, stays yeah. alive. Yep. That's the, uh, the Brad Osmus theory there when a pitcher throws a bad breaking ball, come right back with another one. And he's able to make the adjustment, and Beachy was. He hung the first one, but that was a dandy. Beachy thought he had a strike out, it looked like. That's in the dirt. And it's a full count to Jose. Jose has walked twice and has not struck out. He walked 11 times in spring training. Fouls that one out of play. It could have been ball four, but yeah, if he hits it, you don't mind. Well, yeah, that was close enough to take a whack at. They're happy he did hit it foul. 3 2 pitch, first time, 76% of the time is hit foul. There's the walk. Yes, it is. That's it. Improved plate discipline since last year for Jose Altuve. That's two walks for Beachy. Not a whole lot of plate discipline going on right there. 
When they say grab a helmet, that's not exactly what they have in mind, young man. Ah, he's having a great time. Just don't get it on that shirt. That's the big challenge. You think he really cares? <laughs> it gets no better than that. <laughs> Travis Buck fouls it for strike one. He hit a ground ball double into the left field corner and drove in a pair in the third inning. He's one for two. Vince Catronio used to broadcast for the Astros on radio. He's in Oakland now doing the A's games and he sent an email today about Travis Buck. Travis got off to a very good start with Oakland in his big league career. And then Steve Swisher moved on to the White Sox. And uh, people were making comparisons of Travis Buck to Steve Swisher. So that became a challenge Vince thought for Travis to try to fulfill what uh, Swisher had done which was provide very good offense for that Oakland club. Fouls it back. He's looked good for the Astros yeah, this spring. Played 280 something that first year in Oakland. Yeah. 288. And uh, had a 377 on base average that first year. Very good numbers. Well, the little fellow just needs an assist from someone larger to get to his seat. Tap foul, still 0 and 2. <laughs> we'll have to check in with that little guy about the eighth inning tonight and see how clean that shirt is. It's going to be one of the intriguing stories of the evening here at Minute Maid Park. He's a styling little dude. Isn't he? <laughs> oh, those yeah. shorts and that shirt. He's got it going on. He does. Took time to dress. Almost clipped him on the elbow, and it's one and two to Travis Buck. Yeah, nice to be able to get Travis in there, give J.D. Martinez a little bit of a rest. Not that he needs one, but give Buck these early season at bats. If he's going to be a pinch hitter, then these at bats will benefit him. Beachy gets a strikeout. It's number three for him. Came right back with that curveball and snapped off to Dandy. Maybe the Travis Buck is just better suited for the National League. You know, in the American League, they don't use the bench as often. And so the opportunities to, to get the spot start probably not there as much, not needed as much. And you know, if you're not a power guy, if you're a corner guy and you don't hit home runs, it's tough to find everyday playing time. And if you can't play center fielder, if you're not a real speed guy, you're basically relegated to being a fourth or fifth outfielder, and those guys probably don't get as many ABs in the American League. Mm -hmm. Carlos Lee drove in a third inning run. Throw goes over, and Altuve dives back. Well, the Rangers have come back to erase that deficit. And you, Darvish, started the game, gave up four in the first, but the Rangers now lead it 7 5 in the fourth. Two balls, no strikes. Mitch Moreland and Nelson Cruz have both gone deep in that slugfest in Arlington. Well, the Rangers can hammer away. Hector Noesi is on the mound for Seattle. We'll pay a little bit more attention to the AL West this year, won't we? JD? Yeah, we're going to have to look at those box scores to figure out who's in that league. <laughs> Hits 3 and 0. Oh. Beachy showing signs of fatigue here. And ball four puts Carlos at first, moving out to a second with one out for Bogusevic. He really is. Just a little, you know, more inconsistent with his breaking ball, misfiring with the fastball, starting to elevate it a little bit more. Roger McDowell is the pitching coach. He has Levon Hernandez up in the bullpen, and he's going to the mound now. And this will buy some time for the guy who was with the Astros in spring training. And just about 30 minutes after the Astros released Levon Hernandez at the end of spring training, the Braves signed him. So he is a long man for them in their bullpen. And as Freddie Gonzalez was saying tonight, JD, before the game, he's really good in that role because we don't have to pinch hit for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to Greg Lucas. Hey, Astro fans, Chevy is proud to present a new show, and it's called Chevy Hometown Kids. Now, it's not about the score, it's about the experience. 
So tune in each Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox Sports Houston. Or to get more information, visit hometownkids.tv to learn more about it. Every Saturday, 10 a.m., Chevy Hometown Kid. There's a couple of them right there. Yeah. That little boy is now going for pizza as Bogusevic bats. He's 0 for 2, reached on an air and grounded out. Strike one. Yeah, the little guy's got a oh slice of pizza going while his dad holds the ice cream for him. So more and more drama building down in that section with that yellow shirt. He's going to eat for the cycle. <laughs> he is determined to keep chomping away. Bogusevic takes. Now one ball, one strike. And 96 pitches for Beachy through four and a third. Braves have the four, five, six spots due up in the sixth inning. Rolled out to second base. Ugla with a toss. Pastor Nicky, the middleman. Whoa, the stretch by Freeman. Saves the double play for the Braves. And it's no runs, no hits, and a man left. And a lot of ice cream and pizza being consumed in this ball game through five. Astros are up by one. Clean up, I'll Burger combo right now, Jack in the Box for just $4.99 plus tax. Buy the all new Mazda CX 5 with 35 highway miles per gallon. And by ATT, rethink possible. The Astros lead 4 to 3, Braves up. And there's a fly ball hit to right center field off the bat of Dan Ugla leading off the sixth inning. Bogusevic on the warning track. One pitch, one out for Jay Happ, who's retired 10 in a row. Ugla, a very dangerous hitter. First pitch swing. But that's a good spot right there. Couldn't quite get enough of it down towards the end of the bat. Good down and away fastball. Great way to start an inning. Quickly dispatch a dangerous hitter with one pitch. Boy, isn't it though? Freddie Freeman's one for two. Freeman looks at ball one. Oh, half after giving up. Two in the second, one in the third has mowed down the Braves. It's a one and one count. Hap could come to the plate in the bottom of the inning if the Astros get a man on. It was Craig Kimbrell, rookie of the year with 160 votes, Freddie Freeman second, Vance Worley third. One ball, two strikes. One of the themes was the appearances. Out of the bullpen trio of Eric O'Flaherty, Johnny Venters, and Craig Kimbrell. Half gets a strikeout. That's number five. It's 11 straight outs for Jay. Oh, 
We talked a couple innings ago about the opportunity for one of the two starting pitchers to take control of the game and clearly Jay Happ has responded. Matt Diaz is 0 for 2. Don't uh, mentally check out, put yourself in the dugout just yet because this guy's very good against lefties and particularly good against Jay Happ in his career. Two balls, no strikes. This is the first time since the 97 season the Astros have had quality starts from each of their first three starting pitchers in a season to open. And they also had uh, four in a row that season. And they came from Shane Reynolds, Mike Hampton, Daryl Kyle, and Chris Holtz in the first four games of 97. 3 and 0. Oh. Might have a green light right here. Should have. Yeah. 3 1 to Matt Diaz with Francisco on deck. Braves have the edge and hit six to four on the Astros, but Atlanta has committed four errors tonight to none for Houston. And he lost him with a two out walk. First walk for Hap after retiring 11 straight batters. Francisco single to right and grounded back to the mound. And with this 0 0.88 ERA from the Astros first three starters. It's been a very good sight for Doug Brocale. 91 pitches for Jay Happ. Out to right field Bogusevic moving in and handcuffed a little bit but he was able to stay with it. Looked like he battled the lights on it and made the catch. After five and a half, the Astros hold on to their one run lead, 4 3. Changes. We'll tell you about them, but I want to tell you about the fact that if you come to the game in a group, Astros baseball is always better. Groups of 20 or more receive great discounted rates too. Fundraising options are available, and ticket and food packages start at only $10 a person. So get your group together and visit Astros.com. We have changes now for Freddie Gonzalez. Jason Hayward is in the game in right field. He'll be batting ninth. And Matt Diaz has moved from right field to left field. Martin Prado has moved from left field to third base. There's Prado at third now. Francisco out of the game and in his number seven spot in the order the new pitcher. Levon Hernandez. Against Chris Johnson. And these guys were teammates in spring training there is strike one to CJ who's 0 for 2. 
Hernandez was bidding to join the Astros starting rotation after they had signed him as a free agent. They released him and the Braves snapped him up right away. There's a strike and it's 0 and 2. Yvonne's been pitching in the big leagues since 1996 when he was a Florida Marlin. After defecting from Cuba. And he's played for about 10 different teams. Marlins Giants Nationals Diamondbacks Expos Mets. Tens an exaggeration. Well you get the idea that's the point. Rockies twins. Yeah. Last year he pitched for Washington. He was 8 and 13 with a 4.47 ERA. Off the plate and. You know if he's in the rotation he usually is the guy who piles up innings he had 175 innings last year could have had 200 but. The Nationals shut him down at the end of the year they wanted to look at some younger pitchers. So he can do that if the Braves wish. And uh, he's been the leader in innings pitched the last 12 years. And Javier Vasquez second in the majors. So you know sometimes he takes a beating and his ERA suffers but he can. Post those innings and save the bullpen and that might be a real issue for Atlanta this year considering the bullpen appearances the Braves had last year. That's flared over second base and dumps into right center field for a Chris Johnson single. Wesley Wright's up in the Houston bullpen. It's kind of fun to watch Levon pitch because it looks like he's just playing catch. Fastball 80 to 82 miles an hour. He's got that big slow curveball. That time it was a little cutter that he threw CJ. Didn't cut a whole lot. That's hit number five for Houston. Jason Castro has bounced out twice. Hit the ball well last time up right at the second baseman. Brandon Beachy in five innings allowed four hits, four runs, one earned. Three walks, three strikeouts. Bouncer Freeman gets the angle for the throw. Here's Pastor Nicky and throwing it away. Levon Hernandez not at first base. So the throw goes from three to six on the force play, and Castro reaches because the ball did not go out of play. He stays at first base. Pastor Nicky fired the ball, but to no avail. Now take a look at it here. The ground ball to the right side. Levon's hustle over there, just not really fast. You couldn't tell where the throw is. Just a little sinker over the bag. So no error on that play because no further advance by Castro. And it's Marwin Gonzalez. He doubled off the right field wall and scored in the fourth. That was a two out run. And Jay Happ knocked it in. And that's the difference in this game right now. Ball one to Gonzalez. Pitcher spot uh, due up next. Happ is coming out to the on deck circle. But Wesley Wright is working in the bullpen, so that may just be a decoy right now. And there's an extra bench player tonight compared to last night's game and the previous ones for Brad Mills. With lefty reliever Fernando Abad being sent to Oklahoma City and the new outfielder Justin Maxwell now on the bench. So five bench players tonight for Brad Mills after having four. It's ball two and two and zero to Marwin Gonzalez, and uh, you know Brad Mills is willing to try it because the Astros felt that with two bullpen lefties that would help them for these first two series against the Rockies and the Braves with the left-handed hitters that those two clubs had. And all along they said their plan was to to go for six games with those two lefties in the bullpen and the 13-man pitching staff. But when they got the opportunity to claim Maxwell on waivers, they did that and made the move today. Runner going. Bouncer left side. Pass the diving product in the left field. And here is Castro going to third. Very well done by Marwin Gonzalez. It's first and third one out as he claps his hands together at first. 
I believe it was Branch Rickey who said nothing more beautiful than a perfectly executed hit and run. And you'll see it. The runner breaks, the shortstop goes to cover, the hole is created. Gonzalez exploits that hole, and the Astros are in business first and third. And now we're going to see a pinch hitter, J.D. Martinez, batting for Jay Happ. A half leaves after six innings of work, and he's going to get a quality start. J.D. Martinez has hit in each of the first three games for the Astros. 333, four for 12, one homer, three runs batted in. Way outside the ball one. I'm not sure how it all broke down with Justin Maxwell and you know how long he's been on the Astros radar when he you know, cleared waivers. I also think that you know, the idea of having two lefties in the bullpen really appealed to Brad Mills. But as he played those first couple games and saw how short his bench was, like, you know what? Uh, we probably can't stick with this plan. Just don't have enough bullets on the bench. There's a shot into center field. And it's five to three Astros. The throw goes into second base. Martinez comes off the bench and makes it a four game hitting streak to open the season. The pinch RBI single. That was a rifle shot. Now the Houston Bats working well here in the sixth inning. And Yvonne Hernandez visited by Brian McCann before facing Schaefer, who's over two with a walk. And the other angle to that, not sure how big a factor it is because Fernando Abad only made two appearances, but in the first one he gave up that long homer to Troy Tulowitzki. There's ball one to Schaefer. Happened six innings, allowed six hits, three earned runs, walking one, fanning five. Through 92 pitches, 60 were strikes. There's a shot going foul past Bobby Meacham. Belt high changeup. Obviously a dangerous pitch, but he had uh, Schaefer so far out in front of it. So you just have to be patient with Levon. Can't get too greedy. The stuff looks so hittable. They just tend to get a little anxious, and Levon takes advantage of that. <laughs> He can change speeds as he does there at 65 to get strike two. He's not only below hitting speed, he's below speeding ticket speed. Looping fly ball left field that will be in for a hit. Gonzalez held and the bases are loaded. He had to make sure that ball wasn't going to be caught by Diaz, but it was easily a hit. And now on the single by Schaefer, three men on for Altuve. Not the prettiest swing, but certainly effective. And the Astros are five for five with runners in scoring position with Altuve batting. Base is loaded one out. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. Has scored a run. Travis Bucks on deck. Nice strike one to Altuve. The Astros now have put together eight hits. Martinez and Schaefer hoping out too they can come through. It's one on one. Tomorrow night's going to be a lot of fun with the players wearing those Colt 45 uniforms. In 1962 with the revolver on the front. Dollar hot dogs caps to the first 10,000 from the 45s. Last Grand Slam August 16th 2011 Brian Bogusevic a game winner against the Cubs.
Greg Lucas remembers that because he had a Gatorade chat with Brian after that game. That was a thriller, Greg. It was, and it was a wet one. But you know what? We'll uh, we'll take a few more of those because nothing like a walk-off grand slam. What they call that? An ultimate walk-off yeah. because all four runs were needed to win the game. True. And uh, that snapped a seven-game losing streak for the Astros. Justin Maxwell has three grand slams. He's on the Astros bench tonight. One of those a pinch hit. He's had a game winner. Two balls, two strikes. Five grand slams have been surrendered by Levon with a 310 batting average against him. As the runners tag, has it, and it'll be a sack fly. Gonzalez coming home. Run number two of the inning makes it six to three, Houston. Altuve gets his first RBI of the season. Good work with the bases loaded to make that contact and get it deep enough to get the runner home from third. Get the ball off the ground, stay out of a double play. Gonzalez scoring run number six. And it's Travis Buck now. Buck had the two run double in the third to left field. He's one for three. Braves haven't gotten off to an 0 4 start since 88. There's strike one. Started low in 10 that year. They wound up 54 and 106 that year. Isn't the same year the Orioles lost 20 in a row or something yeah, like that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it is. To start the season, right? Yeah. <laughs> 20 plus, I think. Wow. How about that to start the season? <laughs> Mulligan, <laughs> start over again, please. One ball, one strike. Well, the Orioles have started this year three and out, along with Tampa Bay. So it looks like an upside down cake to many in the AL East. One and two. Yankees are leading Baltimore tonight, six to two in the top of the ninth. Good let up there by Hernandez. Buck, who's shown a willingness to go the other way, was maybe looking to yank something there and was out in front of it. Boston is down in the top of the ninth at Toronto two to one tonight. Dustin Pedroia hit his first homer. Boston pitching staff has been riddled with hits and runs. Two balls, two strikes. Josh Beckett really gave it up a few nights ago. Bullpen has been torched a few times. Asavis, Melanson yesterday. Buck takes a little walk before seeing the 2 2 pitch. Freddy Gonzalez Braves. Strong until the end last year. Wound up with 89 wins in Freddie's second year, succeeding Bobby Cox. After a successful stint with the Florida Marlins. Strike three call, and that ends it. And Buck really unhappy at that strike three call from Gary Darling. But the Astros do add to their lead with two runs on four hits. Here's Chris Johnson. He got it started. Gonzalez, Martinez, Schaefer chimed in. Six to three.
Hyundai owners are talking about their cars in the booth. Buy Whataburger, proud to serve it hot and fresh 24 hours a day. And by the Progressive Insurance Group for a money-saving car insurance quote call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE today. Now back to the booth. Bill Brown and Jim Deshaies. Oh, what a pleasant night in Houston. Nice breeze blowing out to left field. The Astros uh, with their new owner Jim Crane watching alongside his wife Francie from behind home plate. Enjoying what's been happening here as they just got two in the sixth inning to lead it now by three. Wesley Wright comes in to try to preserve that lead, JD. And you see by the numbers there that he uh, was very good in his limited time in Houston and especially good against lefties. Master Nicky to be followed by two left handed hitters in this inning takes strike one. Left handed hitters one for 26 against Wesley last year. Wesley retired both lefties he faced Saturday night against Colorado gave up two runs in two thirds of an inning though. Broken bad roller out to Altuve. One out. Strong finish by Jay Happ as he retired to 12 of the last 13 men he faced did not allow a hit after the third inning. And he's in line for win number one of the year. Four straight quality starts to open the season by the Astros the first time since 97. And Jason Hayward 227 for his career against lefties comes up. Had that big year in 2010 last year he slipped he had some right shoulder problems. His swing got out of whack. There's strike one to Hayward and he really struggled last season compared to what he had done his rookie year. Batting average dropped what, 50 points or something like that. Yeah. Our numbers were down, but maybe because of that shoulder, he's still 22 years of age, a marvelous talent. He really is. Saw one scouting report on him today. You know these anonymous articles written by scouts indicating that he has mostly an upper body swing, doesn't get the lower body into it a whole lot. No balls two strikes. But with those long arms he can really reach out and hit a pitch hard a pitch away from him. A lot of pitchers work him in. Sounds a little bit like the Brett Wallace story. It does. Who had a big night last night. Three for four a home run and a double. That is a big night. Eight pitches for Wesley Saturday against the Rockies charged with two runs and two thirds of an inning. Goes down on strikes. And he crowded him, and then he took it away from him and got the strikeout for out number two. Michael Bourne is 0 for 3 tonight. Three ground outs for Michael. Seventeen thousand ninety five the attendance that's actually people in the ballpark as we mentioned earlier one hopper to Carlos Lee. And he takes out Michael to make it a one two three seven with the Astros leading six to three.
total of eight hits and six runs. Strike call there makes it one and one. Carlos had one of those hits and one of those RBIs in the third inning. He also walked in the fifth. Second frame for Levon Hernandez. He was touched up for four hits and two runs in the last inning. This is out of play and it's one and two. Josh Hamilton has unloaded his second long ball of the year. You Darvish is still in there and the Rangers lead eight to five over the Mariners after five. And the hard hitting AL West. Fernando Rodriguez warming up for Houston as Carlos taps it foul. So Wesley Wright, who got three in a row, might be leaving this game. Boston just got two in the ninth to take a 3 2 lead at Toronto. Against the closer, Sergio Santos. It's two and two. We're on a record pace for blown saves in Major League Baseball <laughs> this year. Hey, isn't that the truth? That slow curve is off the plate. Carlos takes and it's a full count. Milwaukee over the Cubs, seven to three, bottom of the ninth in Wrigley. John Axford in the game. Bogusevic and Johnson will follow Lee. Who swings and foul tips it for a strikeout. Second strikeout for Hernandez. Bogusevic, 0 for 3 tonight. Oh, that little fellow in the yellow shirt and chomping away all night long. Strike one to Bogusevic. Great night for eating. Tomorrow night, dollar hot dogs will be the fair. A lot of the old time favorite players are back. Signing autographs from 6 to 6 30 in the concourse. That's a shot in the air to center field. Michael Bourne legging it back for the catch. Two down. Know your turf for Michael out there. Good swing in the bat for Bogey. Yeah, he hit that one deep. View from way up, and you can see how much ground the center fielder has to cover in this ballpark. That is an immense area. Chris Johnson singled his last time up. He's one for three. They strike one to CJ. They're in the ninth at New York with Washington and the Mets tied 3 3. Little tap is a fair ball and he's tagged out. He didn't run and McCann grabbed it and tagged him for the third out. After seven, it's 6 to 3. Houston.
Carlos back. Gave the Astros an opportunity to come back, which they did as Carlos Lee tied it on the RBI single. 3-3 in the third inning. Jay Happ gave them the lead with a two-out single. Scoring Marwin Gonzalez, 4-3 Houston. And off the bench, pinch hit RBI single by J.D. Martinez to give him a four-game hitting streak to open the season. And the Astros played some add-on with two more in the sixth inning. They lead it now 6-3 with the Braves coming up against pitcher number three. And uh, Wesley Wright uh, is still out there, actually. Chad Durbin is warming up for the Braves. So we might be seeing uh, Fernando Rodriguez later, but... Uh, Wesley stays in against Prado. Prado is one for three. He doubled and scored in the third. Yankees won six to two at Baltimore tonight. There is strike one. And uh, Ivan Nova got that win for the Yankees, beating Brian Mattis and uh, Andrew Jones at his first of the year. Matt Weeders number two for Baltimore. Wesley well, right, the only left-hander in the Astros bullpen right now, and I imagine had last inning not been as efficient as it was, he wouldn't be in this game. Liner to right. Yeah, he went one, two, three and didn't throw many pitches, did he? Six or seven pitches. You'd like to have him available as much as possible for this three game set with the Braves because of all their left handed bats. But, uh, because that, that first inning he worked went so quickly, uh, you know, might as well run him back out there for another one. Big night out there. Yeah, so now he faces another lefty hitter, McCann. And you got McCann, then you got Freeman, two hitters later. McCann singled in a run in the third. He's one for three. Now the Astros, uh, like the game summary we showed, those three runs in the third, that all started after two out and nobody on. And then the one run in the fourth came with two outs, nobody on, and the eight hole hit her up. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good, good clutch. And maybe unexpected offense tonight. The double by Gonzalez, the RBI single by Jay Happ, the go ahead run scoring on that hit by Happ. Mm -hmm. He earned it. He really did, and the uh, starting pitchers are doing some hitting, aren't they? Let's see. Uh, Bud Norris had the double yesterday, and Lucas Harrell had a bunt single Saturday night. So that's now a three game hitting streak by Astros starting pitchers. There isn't a stat for that, is there? No balls, two strikes. Oh, I imagine we can find it. We'll keep one. Hitting streak by Astros pitchers. No balls, two strikes. Well, you have to admit, probably hasn't happened all that many times. Last decade or so. Ugla's on deck with this infield shifted around. Chris Johnson over where the shortstop would be a lot of the time. In tight on McCann, that makes it one and two. St. Louis disposed of Cincinnati seven to one at Great American Ballpark. That makes the Cardinals four and one, and the Reds are two and two. Jake Westbrook won it. The Cardinals got four in the first. Homer Bailey lost it. It's a looping fly ball left center field. Could be in for a hit, but Schaefer is there. It hung up for him for out number one. And McCann was kind of bailing out on that. And Schaefer had plenty of time to get there. Now Brad Mills is out of the dugout. And with Dan Ugla two up next and probably the idea in mind that you express that uh, hey two more games left in this series with all these left handed hitters on the Braves let's save Wesley Wright. He's already gotten four outs in this game. That'll be it for him. And we get a change here in the eighth inning with the score Houston six Atlanta three.
beaten by the end of the night and that's been based largely on solid starting pitching through the first four games. Jay Happ posting the fourth straight quality start by the Astros out of the shoot. I wanted to give up three runs in his start but they were unearned. I thought he was a little wobbly with his command for much of his outing but he hung in there and battled. Lucas Harrell was really really good on Saturday but Norris threw the ball quite well yesterday just a two run home run. Blemishing if there's such a verb in his line. And then Jay Happ tonight really finishing strong retiring 12 of the final 13 batters he's faced and there's Kyle Weiland in the center of your picture there next to J.D. Martinez. He's up next. He gets the baton tomorrow. <laughs> Pressure's on Kyle. <laughs> First start as an Astro coming up tomorrow for the former Red Sox right hander. Dan Ugla's the batter. Fernando Rodriguez is the pitcher. Ugla's 0 for 3. Astros starters at 1 and 0 with a 0 0.88 coming into this game. Fernando lost to the Rockies Friday, giving up an unearned run at 1 and 2 thirds, throwing 43 pitches. Astros starting pitchers had a three game winning streak back in August with Myers, Bud Norris, and Wandy Rodriguez. Oh, three game hitting streak. Okay. So uh, maybe it isn't all that rare. No balls, two strikes. Down in the count with Freddie Freeman on deck. By that swing, he had designs on the Crawford boxes, really pulling off that ball down and away. He's strong enough to take a pitch away and hook it out of here. In the dirt, the runner takes off. No throw by Castro. Prado advances on the wild pitch. Astros have the edge and hits eight to seven and lead it by three with one out here in the eighth. And the curveball gets a strikeout. Ugly retired two outs in the inning. Strikeout number seven for Astros pitching tonight. Bad AB for Ugly took that first pitch fastball, was right there, and then chased a couple well out of the zone. Doug Brokale runs out to the mound with Freeman to bat next. He's one for three. Well, the Astros' ERA as a team was 2.00 for the first three games coming into this one. And the bullpen, because of the four good starts of six innings or more, has not been stressed. Rodriguez making his second appearance of the year. Fernando Abad and Wesley right now have made two. Everybody else just one out of that bullpen. In the air and Chris Johnson goes over to foul ground and calls with the back pedaling play to end the Braves eighth. No runs a hit a runner stranded at second. The Astros lead it by three six to three.
on Astros.com with the MLB.com at Bat12 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, and Windows Mobile. Get live audio, pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Just text at Bat to 31826 or visit Astros.com for details. Thank you, Greg. We're looking at right-hander Chad Durbin warming up for the Braves. He'll be pitcher number three for them. Levon Hernandez, who pitched after Brandon Beachy, went five. Hernandez went two innings, allowing four hits, two runs, no walks, striking out two. Durbin just picked up by the Braves uh, after being released by Washington. Well, last year he was with the Cleveland Indians, and he compiled those numbers: two and two with a 5.53 ERA through 56 ball games. Well-traveled right-hander started his big league career with the Royals back in 1999. Used to be a starting pitcher, but last few years mostly out of the bullpen. Jason Castro looks like a cutter there in on him for ball one. Batting for the fourth time 0 for 3 tonight. After he grounded into that force play he scored the run in the sixth inning first run of that frame. It's one and one to Jason 0 for 8 to start the season. Marwin Gonzalez is on deck. Eight hits for the Astros tonight. Backdoor curve there. It's a fastball cutter curveball and change up for Durbin. Velocity probably a little bit below major league average. Two and two Durbin started his career with Kansas City. He's made more than. 360 appearances in his career, 56 for the tribe last year. Tomorrow night, one of those interesting evenings, the April 10th date, the beginning of the franchise in 62, as the Colt 45s played their first game at Old Colt Stadium, and Bobby Shantz knocked off the Chicago Cubs 11 to 2. Roman Mejias hit a pair of three run homers, and it was a great. Start for baseball in the state of Texas, April 10th, 1962. Bob Aspermani will be here tomorrow night to relive it. Three and two, the count. They trained uh, in Arizona in those days, out in the Cactus League. Came in, had a, of course a lot of folks waiting for them at the airport for that first game. Rolled out to second. Ugla takes care of out number one. Very exciting time though as it had been all those years until Major League Baseball came to Texas 1962. You know um, the Dodgers had been in L.A. since 58 and the Giants in San Francisco moving out from New York and it just seemed to be such a vast expanse of territory here in the Southwest without Major League Baseball for all those years. Marwin Gonzalez has scored two runs tonight, going two for three. Justin Maxwell is on deck, the newest Astro. With the pitcher due up next. And Brett Myers is at work in the bullpen. Showing bunt. Gonzalez takes it for a ball. One and one. Yeah, those players came from all over the place in the expansion draft and some signing as free agents by the Colt 45s. Gabe Paul was the first general manager, but he quit before the first game. Paul Richards replaced him. Two and one, and uh, just uh, a bunch of castoffs at that time. <laughs> the expansion draft did not allow the Mets and the Colt 45s an opportunity to take very many good players. Yeah, the other owners weren't. Overly generous, were they? No. The way they structured that draft. That's a line shot into center. One of them, though, Bob Aspermonte lasted a long time. Well, Gonzalez gets his third hit of the night. What a thrill for the rookie. Now Justin Maxwell comes up for his first Astros plate appearance. Just put on a uniform this afternoon. And this spring he hit 310. The Astros claimed him off waivers yesterday from the Yankees. He was at Columbus all last year, hitting 260 for them, but had been with Washington 
in 07, 09, and 10. In 201, he said uh, today's the first time he's ever been outside an airport and on ground in Texas. So he's been in the airport in Texas, but not on a baseball field. There's strike one. He's from Maryland. Pulled off that little cutter there from Durbin Maxwell. Physically a very gifted player. He's strong. He's fast. What has held him back is, is a lack of plate discipline. He strikes out a lot. He was drafted in the fourth round in 05 by Washington. Had a surgery on his right shoulder last June. And missed the bulk of the season at Scranton Wilkesbury for the Yankees. But the ability to play center field allows him to move into the Astros picture here JD after Jason Bourgeois was traded to Kansas City along with Humberto Quintero the Astros of course became interested in players with the talents of a Justin Maxwell. Yeah, so you can you know you get a tough lefty out there you want to give Schaefer a night off you can give Maxwell the start and have the platoon advantage with a right handed bat. Fastball from Durbin takes care of strike two. The challenge for a lot of right handed hitters with power is not to be intoxicated by the Crawford boxes. Don't let that get in your head or you're going to try to jerk everything to left field to take advantage of that short porch. Back in 07, Justin was the minor league player of the year for the Nationals. Well, <laughs> he hits one out toward the Crawford boxes. Maxwell with a high drive. And he bangs it above the archway. A two run home run for Justin Maxwell in his first at bat with the Astros. That's making a first impression. Well, his first major league hit was a pinch hit grand slam. And now here in Houston, it's a pinch hit two run homer for the newest Astro, Justin Maxwell. Welcome to town. The last Astro to hit a home run. As his first Astros hit was pitcher Gustavo Chassin in 2010. Yeah, I'm seeing, I talked about not pulling off the ball, trying to take advantage of the Crawford boxes, and he did just that. He just leaned in, stayed on that ball, whereas he pulled off of his first couple of swings. And Schaefer bounces out. Out number two, now eight to three with the Maxwell home run, the first long ball of the night. That's some thunder off the bench. The Astros with two pinch hits tonight producing a total of three runs Martinez had the pinch RBI single in the sixth. So they are now four for seven. The pinch hitters collectively this season. Well, that'll sit Brett Myers down in the bullpen. Strike one to Altuve. Don't need to use him tonight. Unless the Braves rally in the top of the ninth. Fernando Rodriguez retired both men he faced one via strikeout. It's David Carpenter getting up now. In tight to Altuve. Ten hits for the Astros who lead it by five now eight three. Five homers so far in game number four. It took 10 games to hit five homers last year. There's a shot off the mound on through into center field. Altuve gets a knock. 11 hits for Houston. Nine different players in the hit department for the Astros. In that number nine spot in the lineup, Jay Happ had the RBI single. So did uh, pinch hitter Martinez and pinch hitter Maxwell. Travis Buck with the two run double in the third got the scoring started. Astros trailed three to nothing in this game. Ball one to Buck. Could be a very nice come from behind win for them. It's a one on one count. Wandy Rodriguez pitches Wednesday night against Randall Delgado. It's 
good night for the GM, isn't it? Oh, you know it. Take a waiver claim, bring a guy in. First at bat, he goes deep. <laughs> Very good night for the GM. Immediate results. That doesn't always happen. One and two. And uh, Jeff Luno was saying, well, that's what we're going to be looking to do. If we can find a player with talent, a young guy like a Justin Maxwell. We're going to be looking to pluck all that young talent. We can George Pistolos there in between David Gottfried on the left and general manager Jeff Luno on the right. You know why George is smiling. Two balls two strikes. And George after his years with the Rockets now gets to enjoy a sporting event every night. <laughs> Many more games in baseball. That's a strikeout to end it. And the long ball came from the talented Justin Maxwell from Bethesda, Maryland, and the University of Maryland. Pitch to Ron Homer. Astros stretch out their lead to eight to three. So far, it's been a very favorable opening week for the Astros on their way to another victory. If the pin can hold it, there's no reason to think they can't. Bill Brown and Jim Deshaies back up in the booth. Thanks, Craig. David Carpenter will break the ice on 2012. It'll be his first appearance of the season. Last year, he made 34 of those with the Astros with those numbers after coming uh, from the Cardinals in the Pedro Feliz deal. Uh, Jeff Luno, when he was uh, in St. Louis, drafted David Carpenter as a catcher. So he's very pleased with the way that transition has gone and thinks that David is a future closer. 12th round of the 2006 draft. And Jeff Luno selected uh, and the Cardinals selected David Carpenter. Uh, so he's kind of the anti Bogusevic. <laughs> Going the other way from position player to pitcher. Matt Diaz leads it off. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. Fernando Rodriguez with a strikeout in his two thirds of an inning of hitless ball. There's strike one. And the Braves, who had a 3 0 lead in the top of the third, have had only one single since the third inning for a total of seven hits tonight. So they've scored uh, 10 runs so far in their first four games. It's one and one. So now with Carpenter making his first appearance. All the relievers have been in game so far, and Kyle Wylan will make his first appearance tomorrow night. Then everybody on the Houston staff will have pitched in a game. Fouled away, it's one and two, and certainly no load at all on Doug Brocale's bullpen with the way these games have gone.
Carpenter gets a swing on that riding fastball. Oh, Diaz didn't think so, and he didn't like the call from Gary Darling, but he's a strikeout victim. The appeal to first base. Eric Hinsky now is the pinch hitter. Yeah, that's. I don't think I've ever seen an umpire appeal a swing after he's already called it a swing. No. Infield shifts around for the lefty hitting Hinsky. Batting for Durbin. Durbin in one inning allowed three hits, two runs, with no walks, one strikeout. Carpenter Hinsky. certainly with enough arm to. To settle into that role as a closer or late in late inning reliever. Here's a change up I think. Nope. Came off of it with the heater 95. 96 miles an hour at times. Slider. And. Uh, dabbles with a split finger pitch. Justin Maxwell at the rail provided the pinch to run Homer in the eighth to make it eight to three. One and two. Looked like the splitter right there. Hinsky's one for two so far this season. All those at bats have come in pinch hitting assignments. Eric fouls it back. Good platoon player. Play the uh, corner outfield spots or first base. Formerly with the Toronto Blue Jays. Rookie of the year with them, wasn't he? A few years back. I've forgotten that, yeah. Chris Johnson was the last Astro to hit a pinch homer September 20th last year before the Maxwell drive off the bench tonight. The Mets got a run in the ninth and beat Washington 4 3. John Roush getting that win over Henry Rodriguez. Terry Collins Club 4 and 0. Oh. Boston beat Toronto 4 to 2. Milwaukee down the Cubs 7 5. Sean Markham notching that victory with a save from John Axford. The ball there makes it. Two and two. Markham very good on the road last year. <laughs> CJ Wilson got the win for the Angels 5 1 at Minnesota today. That's out of play. Interesting that. Angels have fortified themselves with CJ on the mound, Albert Pujols at first base, and they're ready to make their run now at the Rangers this year. Rangers still leading 8 5 after 7 at home against the Mariners. Hamilton, Cruz, and Moreland have all gone deep for the Rangers in that ball game. They hit, don't they? Great lineup. 3 and 2. If Moreland hits, that'll just add to all the fun that they have. He will hit, I think. Tough to handicap, though. Boy, really good pitching staff in California. The Angels. And here we go. Play from right field on Altuve to Lee to get him. And the shift works perfectly for Brad Mills. Altuve throwing out Hinsky from right field. <laughs> Hinsky can only smile. Score it. Rover to first base. <laughs> Some tough luck for Hinsky to hit a ball into right field and not get a hit. Tyler Pasternicki is one for three, an RBI on his single in the second inning. 
Astros have out hit the Braves 11 to 7 but Atlanta has committed four errors tonight. Leading to three unearned runs and now the ball is in the air toward Altuve. And the Astros open the season three and one. David Carpenter getting the final outs. And the Braves who score two in the second one in the third get only one hit after the third inning. The Astros and the young guns are firing out to a three and one record winning this one eight to three.